It was later. Because we had just we had just come from the sushi restaurant with Matt and Kendall. Right. And they and they dropped us off at my father in law's house. So it couldn't have been three in the morning because we came from the sushi restaurant. And the sushi restaurant was probably about 45 minutes away from the house. Yeah, so it was like 3.30. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was so late. That's not what it was. Anyways, it's, the mic was perfect. It's probably about... Why turn this down? Turn what down? You can't turn it down. What do you mean? What do you mean by turn it down? Like the volume? No, like this facing downwards. Are you really gonna try? Yeah, I can't. All right, all right, all right. You're not gonna lay down. We're gonna sit here and have a conversation oh. like a couple of grown men. <sighs> Sometimes grown men sleep too, Brian. Listen, I know you're not used to this. Listen, I'm tired too. Okay, listen, I get it. Linda, we just, we Linda, can't. Linda. We can't, I know, we're, we're both at the same barbecue, we've been all the same places today. I woke up a little bit earlier than you. So. And I'm on a three hour ahead time zone. Fair, but we so still got the same. So we're starting amount. this podcast at 3.30 a.m. For your time. <laughs> all right. All right. But that's not what we, time we started the other podcast. The other podcast I'm not complaining. Was, this is a great weekend. Good. I'm glad. I just like laying down when I podcast. You know, let's I, get into this. Let's get into this. Okay. So we got a couple of drink sponsors here in the couple end. Couple of. So this one was pre-planned. This is a premeditated one here. We got a bottle of Four Roses Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey from Blake Stewart at Stewart Design. Yes, sir. So this is pretty cool. He put some thought into this one. I'm pretty excited to try it actually. You, there was a, a bottle of, um, it wasn't this one, but it was. there was a bottle of Four Roses open at MJ's thing that we just got back from tonight. Right, yeah, uh, that was Andrew at Redwood Reptiles. He picked that up and, and brought it over. Which Do you remember what kind it was? It was it, the it Small Batch Select. Okay, yeah. Different shape bottle. Different, Four Roses has right. like 10 or five different yeast strains and like 10 different mash bills, I think. Is it 10 different mash bills? They said that, yeah. This one's like, a, this particular one is a high rise, like 35% rye. Which yeah. is pretty high rye. It yeah. should be pretty good. We also got a couple of other bottles at the barbecue. Or also from, rye. Also rye. Yeah, rendev- rendev- rendezvous rye from High West and a double rye from High West Whiskey. Both uh, this distillery is out of Utah. And that was Derek, who, and I can't make this up, has the Instagram following pied underscore retic. He's going to be... Specializing in pied retics. I thought you were gonna say he's gonna be paid for that one someday. <laughs> paid for what? Just like, hey, can I have your name? Because I'm the pied retic guy, not you. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's potentially something, I guess. I remember uh, I... Mattel Toys was negotiating with prehistoric pets to get their name because hmm. they came out with like a toy line of prehistoric pets or oh, like little toy dinosaurs. Jay once told me how he got the name because there's another guy that had the name prehistoric pets and okay. he was what, what was it what was prehistoric pets what was it called prehistoric pets? It was like the pet express not pet express. But oh, you're talking about when it was like puppies and kittens. Yeah. Uh pet land pet land no not uh, pet land. I forget. Anyway, I he he the guy that he got the name from, he it was a pair of Suriname boas, some beautiful Suriname boas that were just gorgeous. And he knew the guy really liked them, I think. And he's like, I'll, I'll give you this pair of just gorgeous Suriname boas for that name. For <laughs> That's funny. So he didn't even come up with a name. He just hijacked it. Yes. He's like, it's a great name. And ran with it. Ran hard Ever with since it. then, you know. I mean, when I was there, he bought yeah, tons and tons of like fossils all through the thing. And yeah, he's all about it, so... It's cool. Yeah, it's good. It's a way to do it. I hope nobody's watching uh, on the YouTube channel because I'm having a hell of a time getting the plastic off of this last bottle or the first bottle of High West. Maybe or maybe High West needs to put a little less difficult plastic on their bottles. How about that, High West? <laughs> <laughs> I like their bottles, though. Oh, the bottle's super cool. I want to make like a lamp out of it after. You know what? Our first... Not the first podcast we did in person, but the, when I built that table for yeah to podcast when you came over yeah uh, at that point our whiskey sponsor was Scott Bolter okay and he gave us a bottle of Mint Winter's Night Dram and it was High West 
Oh, one of these bottles. Okay. Just a slightly different I don't know beverage. why you remember that. I just finished the bottle. <laughs> I, I just okay. finished it, uh, like, go. last week. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's good. Well, you I you must have quite the collection now of oh, unfinished dude. bottles, because we got... I mean, I'm not taking any of these home. This is not taking three. any of these home. Oh, well, maybe you I don't brought know. that one. All right, I'll figure out which one I like. I guess. Okay. Maybe we usually like different ones anyway, so it works out pretty good for the most cases. I'm interested because I, I I'll start with this one. This double rye, I have a couple bottles of at home, and that's because I, I actually liked it so much that I had done the finished one. I was like, and I saw it for a very exceptional deal, so I was like, well, I better go get. That, so I have a backup, and now there's a third one in my life that I mostly remember the cool plastic from. It. Yeah, it does have a cool top on it. Uh, it's like a It's a cork inside, and then, yeah, it's like angled outside. Though. Right, right. Yeah, it's like the it's bottle goes the in between the cork and the yeah, cap. Right, yeah, right, yeah. It's cool. It's kind of hard to describe some of this stuff for audio. Oh. can be. Well, you know, I mean, I traveled through a fallopian tube to get here, so I feel like we should be able to do... Oh, damn, that was <laughs> solid. I feel like that's maybe what it sounded like. <laughs> TMI. Oh, man. TMI. It's just, I'm just guessing. Oh, you already poured some of the four roses. I, yeah, I, I Well, I'll, I'll stay on the same train as you. Okay, that's a good idea. There you go. All righty. Yeah, that is a cool cork. It keeps it, like, solid. You're not going to twist it and, like, like bend, actually bend it the wrong way because you you're, like, it's got guides. Yeah, a handle. You cork with a handle. Cork with a handle. Yeah, it's like the outer handle on the inner cork. I guess I wouldn't describe it as a handle. But anyway, that's not important. What is some, important? I got some good food in my belly from MJ's. House. Mm, yeah, the barbecue. That was fun. Yeah, that was that was a good time. You know, I was expecting to play some cheers, bro. I'm, I'm glad that happened. Speaking of cheers and good times, we should probably uh, shout out the location sponsor who allowed this to even happen in person, where we get to sit across from the table from each other on this. I feel like we're always shouting them out let the, let's let them speak for themselves oh sure why not <laughs> insert video here <laughs> $30 flat rate shipping anywhere in the US <laughs> <laughs> this is started beautifully <laughs> for those who don't know about cold Blood cafe um Pride ourselves on a couple things. I think uh, one thing is the fulfillment of orders. You know, over the past year and a half of COVID, the rodent business has been uh, kind of turned upside down a little bit. Um, prices have been going up. The availability of certain sizes has been, all, all, you know, from certain suppliers uh, has been off and on. Um, what we've tried to do the whole time is at least just stay consistent be able to provide our customers with what they need to feed their animals consistently and uh, stay competitive on pricing. We have a big sale going on right now, have been for a couple of weeks on most of the sizes of rodents. Uh, one that we don't get to put on sale often or a couple are, are medium and large rats, which are very popular for you know ball pythons, boas, you know, smaller reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, uh, some larger snakes that are more popular so definitely a time right now if you're out jump on it but another thing that we do that we really pride ourselves on is the the quality of the rodents and, and particularly how we freeze and ship them so we are one of if not the only company that freezes our rodents in dry ice uh, how most companies will do it is uh put them in a in a chest freezer in a walk-in freezer on like a like a baker rack pretty much and, you know, freezing it at, in a freezer. But uh, dry ice has a temperature of negative 109.3 degrees, I believe. Um, I mean, it's just, it's it's true. It's what we do. Um, and those, you know, those rodents will be from, from euthanized to frozen solid, often less than 15 minutes. Um, oh, minutes. And with the traditional freezing method, you're looking at like one to two days. So uh, those rodents are, are much fresher, last a lot longer. We ship with plenty of dry ice, and uh, especially these days where a lot of you know, retail commerce has gone online to shipping, um, there's a lot of delays. 
in in shipping fulfillment with UPS, FedEx. Out of our hands, we try to do our best to uh, kind of compensate for that, you know, throw some extra dry ice in those boxes, make sure that if they're sitting an extra day or two, even in the summer, the product gets to you frozen. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're reptile people as well, and we know what we want for our feeders, so we try to keep those standards for what we want to give to our animals, to everybody who orders from us. So to anyone who already supports us, we thank you very much for your past and continued support. And anyone who hasn't tried us out yet, I, I was a customer before I was, well, I was here. So I fully recommend Cold Blooded Cafe through and through. And I uh, think a lot of other people do as well. And we're very proud of that. So That's a wrap. Cold Blooded Cafe. <laughs> Take one. No, I'm gonna take one. I was take like awesome. Yeah, no, that was perfect. Do you want to say anything else, Ted? Wrap it up for us. Yeah, I just um just want to thank everybody for the continued support and um yeah, it's been it's been really great. (laughs) Thomas, you better have that clip for me, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it seems like you're where Garrett is, wants to be laying this, down this Tom, sleeping. Tom, I know Tom, Thomas is supposed to be doing our first official vlog video, and uh, I feel like it's going up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> you should have plenty of footage at this point. I'm curious to oh, see lots of footage. Yeah, I am curious to see how he's going to craft a story out of it, right? Yeah, I think it's mostly like shots of his feet and the waves and airplane travel. <laughs> We'll see. Well, he does watch a lot of Casey I Neistat. Hope you guys can hear this. <laughs> we can't hear you down there on the floor, Thomas. It's not going to work. You have to come up here. Oh, if Thomas going to stand up for yourself. You Tom- have to Thomas stand, stand up. For those of you that only yourself. listen to Searchable's Reptiles to see me and don't have know anything about Garrett, which hey is guys. probably not accurate. <laughs> this is Thomas. First podcast, actually. Yeah. So Thomas is Garrett's film editor and and video guy, and he's actually he a really cool films. kid. You said film. That's really nice of you. Is that nice of me? Yeah. Good. Well, I, was I wasn't trying to be nice. Creator. I was just saying no, 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 it's some people go with the term. You got to like, be closer to that mic. Uh, some people are like, I'm a filmmaker and I make videos for YouTube. It's like, mm, you know, no judgment here, but do you make films? I mean, do and any of us use film anymore? That's true. It's all digital. Anyway, point I make, is, I make point digits is, digits for YouTube. The way the way Garrett is painting this picture of the video is, it's it's going, it's good. I'm happy, and I think the footage we got is good. I just okay. wanted to clarify that. We'll see. All right. I'm just laughing we'll at how, how uncomfortably close he had to get to Garrett's face to talk to that mic. It's kind of, Garrett's like, oh, I don't know. Set my piece. <laughs> A little cheek to cheek action there. Oh, man. Well, it is only Friday night. Well, I guess technically Saturday morning now. I guess we've yeah. flipped the dial and it's been an eventful trip already. It has. I mean, it was. It was. Uh, I'm. I'm in a different. I'm in a different zone. I had a couple of chocolate. <laughs> time out. It does need to time out. <laughs> so yeah, if you just listen to the clip from the sponsor, I mean, everybody was kind of partying pretty hard. Not everybody. I was fine. I had a Coke. Coca Cola. To clarify. <laughs> <laughs> you what? You had a Coke. Yeah. You didn't have any tacos. I had a water. Oh, yeah, I did. I had a couple of... You had of, water, co- coke, yeah, and veggie tacos? veggie tacos. Okay. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. I think I had... I, maybe I had like an IPA in the beginning of the night. But there were other people with other things, and Desiree was one of them. Oh, that's decent. That's decent. I, I do enjoy the single barrel version of the Four Roses. It's better than the small batch select, in my opinion. I wish I had tonight as well. Yeah, no, I. Uh, it's pretty strong, dude. I, I am, whew, I'm somewhere right now. I'm sitting back in the <laughs> hotel room. I was in like full party. It was awesome. Like we had everybody going around hanging out with snakes. You know, it felt. Like, you know what was cool for me is because Carpet Fest didn't happen. Southwest Carpet Fest didn't happen. It, it, this was a lot like this your was Southwest a lot like Carpet Southwest Fest. Carpet Fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a it, couple of the same people. Yeah, but, but Brandon was it? Brandon yeah, but Wheeler? probably only five or ten percent. You know, and then a uh, bunch of new people. Yeah, I mean Dave. Dave was there, like um, Dave Kaufman. Yeah, 
and Rami. it was fun filming. Rami Very was there, Su- Reptile Super Show, po- potentially the next uh, location sponsor for the podcast. He told me. He doesn't know that yet. Yeah, but you're going to go get him, right? I said potentially. Yeah. That's, thank you, Rami. <laughs> TIA. <laughs> um, no, he, he told me that the Anaheim Reptile Super Show coming up, like as far as ticket pre-sales go, is going to be his biggest show yet. And I think his show overall is the biggest show that the U.S. has had, at least maybe since... uh, I feel like IRBA was bigger way back in the day, and I know that none of the listeners probably ever went to any of those, but... Or half of the hosts on this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's like when I was a little kid, I would drive down here to San Diego, and I was kind of driving down... I told you this, Thomas, right? I was like, man, this is like IRBA all over again. Just like, you know, you pass certain landmarks and stuff. And I'm like, I can remember my dad sitting over in the in the driver's seat. And like, How big oh was it? Gosh. Like, when you're saying big, like you're talking about people well, attending was, or like size of show? Because like, as far as I know, the Super Show at this point, last time I checked, the Super Show was basically the biggest reptile show in the world. Yeah, but does that mean ever or in recent I don't know about history? ever. I mean, yeah, I think at the time that it was so, happening before COVID, let's say. So I don't know. If anyone does know about it, they can, you know, you guys will have to jump over to, like, our Searchable as Reptiles Facebook group or something and make some comments about IRBA. It was the International Reptile Breeders Association. And it was put on by, like, uh, the guys over at Vivarium Magazine, if anyone remembers that. You know Philippe. Of course. Devojali. Devojali. Did I say it right? Almost. Very close. Just Pretty close. I instead of E. Yeah, a little bit more. Uh, you got to put the Latin twist on there. Like right. Devojali or right, right. Michelai. Right. Michelie. <laughs> anyway. Um, Brevely, bread Those guys, those guys would run it. And maybe it's because I was younger and smaller. And and it it was definitely like I was take back take me back to my childhood reptile industry experience where I'm a kid catching stuff in my backyard. You know, basically. And then you walk into these shows and you're like, oh my gosh. You know the one thing that hasn't changed at all since then? One thing in the reptile industry remains exactly the same from all the way back from when I was a little kid. Do you want to guess what it is? Um, there were reptiles at the show? Oh, well, I feel like that's accurate. Okay, I suppose that's a given. <laughs> I was going to say Dan Maleri's physique. <laughs> I remember like being up to his waist and looking up at him. And then, you know, and I, I've, I've like worked with him, met him, bought stuff from him throughout the is that, history. Is that really what you were going to say? Yes, that is really what I was going to say. <laughs> I, I literally I'd go to his table and he had like all the tiger rat snakes and stuff. I'm like, wow, that guy's yoked. <laughs> and he's got all the coolest snakes at the show. And it's still the same. Although he's. Is he going to be at the show? I don't know. I mean, he's I going pretty hard in, in... I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he's living in Thailand now yeah, with his wife. That, that house. Amazing house. Looks, yeah, it looks beautiful. Oh, Great I just got an idea for our next location sponsor. Oh, snap. We need to do that. Yeah. Sorry for everyone's ears if I said that weird noise. No, you good, I think. Anyway. Pop, 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 pop. <sighs> <laughs> Uh, no, so there was a super weird spin. On Can this I just week. say weird as far as weird goes? Like all these lights in this hotel room, like we were in the backyard barbecue situation. And now we're like sitting up in the hotel room with all the lights on. It's it's a little weird. I'm just gonna I say. think it feels better because he had like some obnoxious lights in his house. <laughs> yeah, the one in his reptile room was. Pretty yeah, the one in the reptile weird. room was. Now I guess I feel like like Des felt when we walked in there and had her do that sponsor plug and why Stephen took over because those lights are like. Now nah, I'm just gonna let you take over. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well so this morning we we're like oh this is great we can sleep in a little bit and then andrew acevedo and uh mj we're gonna come over here and pick us up at the hotel and take us back and we're you know just kind of goofing off and being us here at the hotel yeah, and, and when like, i was like i was like when did they i was like i look at my text messages like dude they said they're like they're 20 minutes away and they said they were like on their way and it's been like 35 30 minutes, minutes since like, then and like, then just a moment after you said that, you're like, holy shit. And you look at your phone, and there's this, uh, I can probably show the camera here for those of you guys that are watching on YouTube. I'll, I'll just, I have the photo. I'll just throw oh, it up okay, on YouTube. Good, good. Yeah. Well, all right. You're going to Just like I did with the up. butt tree last month. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, they got a major car accident. 
So, and I, the details, like at first you see that picture and you're like, wow, this, that, that thing's trash. That must've been, you know, they must, I, you know, I don't know. It was upside were they on weaving? its, for those of you that are not watching on YouTube, it was on its head, all the windows on the busted roof. out. Yeah. Like, yeah Toyota like, four runner rolled over yeah, on the side and of the freeway. Just like the bumper just like thrashed. And, and just you're like, like, how does that happen? Like what, did they swerve weird? What happened? No, they, they were stopped in traffic. They were sitting full stop. And some woman, MJ said that he looked up in the rearview mirror and he had one of those adrenaline moments where everything goes slow mo. And he's like, I could see her just coming like impossibly close and not looking up. And she was just driving full freeway speed and slammed into the rear of their car. And you know, probably the things that saved her, they said she was driving some like low to the ground little wedge shaped Pontiac. And so it just, completely their tires just crushed her passenger side and it was like a ramp in reverse instead of driving up a ramp the ramp's driving under you right and just flipped them up so it hit you know collided with the back but flipped them over to the side and i'll bet if that if all that energy had actually transferred into like colliding into the back of their car she'd have probably been dead and they would have been severely jacked up but as it was, uh, MJ was like, you know, he, he just said, I looked over to Andrew and made sure he was okay. And then I had to kind of like undo my seatbelt. And then it was a weird feeling because he felt like he should have been sitting upright, but he fell up to the ceiling and had to kind of army crawl out of the car. And then Andrew came out and... <laughs> yeah, ha- yeah having just... been in an upside down car twice now in my life, I, I know that feeling very well of like yeah. having to undo your seatbelt so you can fall out yep. and then climb out fall of the car. Fall up and yeah. then you climb out and you're like, whoa. It's a surreal feeling. And it's a, you definitely like, it's a lot to take in. I was kind of, it, it was cool that the barbecue still happened for sure. Because like, well, like he said, he had already paid for the caterer. So <laughs> what's it, what are you going to do? But, but no, I mean, he like, so we were going to go out there in the morning, like early in the morning. You wanted to film an episode. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the dude, on that note, like, I'm super glad that they, with the way it went down, be, that they walked away and, like, it was fairly minor injuries. Cause, like, just, just the knowledge, like, that they were coming to pick us up if they hadn't made it, like, if it had gone, like, wrong. An hour later, two hours later, why aren't they calling us? What's going on? And then you find out. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been okay. I wouldn't have been okay with that. So I'm glad well, that they're obviously, okay. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. No, I mean, but, but that's I, what I'm saying. So it's like, the you know you have that kind of thing it's a brush with your mortality and it put a a super weird perspective on it because we had a lot of like really honestly it was not a huge party but there were some industry giants there tonight you know and uh you could very easily make that about business about reptiles about shop talk and everything that was happening just like you know mj at one point at the end of the night, he has chickens. He went to go like put them in their pen for the night, and he he came back to me and he's like, "Dude, I just cried putting my chickens away. Like, I love my chickens, and I might not have ever get to see them again, you know." And they were both sore, right? Like, I mean, this is a pretty big accident. They're gonna be wrecked tomorrow. Um, but yeah, wow, just crazy. Yeah, just was... crazy. Put it all in perspective. So. It, you know, and, and what time was that in the morning that we were going to go? It was like 8 or 9 o'clock. Yeah. It was pretty early. Yeah. And then um, we were like, well, let's just, I was like, we've got our own car, obviously. Let's just give them a couple hours to figure this out. So we ended up going out to Coronado Island and having some breakfast. Uh, really good breakfast. Doesn't that seem like it was like days ago now? It does. Well, no, you know, honestly, it does seem like it was this morning. No, it was this morning. Okay. That's, That's good. me. I was glad that Long you wanted night. to get that salmon thing because I wanted that, and you were willing to split, split your avocado toast. Yeah, with my- <laughs> it was perfect Locks blend, in. wasn't that? Like you have the avocado nope, toast yep. and the salmon. Someone bagel? should make that for breakfast, guys. Yeah. Come on, lox bagel and avocado toast it goes mm. very well together. Tasty. So with a side of potatoes, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, the, the perspective was, was good. And, you know, honestly, I needed it today because I ended up running into a bunch of business crap that I had to deal with from this side of the country. You know, just stuff going crazy back at the shop, stuff going crazy over at the bank, you know. Just but it gives the, you that perspective of, hey, at least like, I have this stuff to deal with. This is this stuff's super frustrating, but none of it matters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. we're alive and 
I'm eating avocado toast or whatever the case may be. Yeah, dude. The the blessings upon blessings, man. That's it. What's the saying? I just read this. I don't know where I saw it, but it was today. Maybe it was on like an Instagram feed or something where uh, it was like, hey, I used to complain and cry when I had no shoes until I met a man with no legs. You know what I mean? And it's just like, <laughs> it just like that puts you in perspective that just like that. You might not have it anymore. So folks, go home, kiss your kids, hug your wife, or hug your kids or kiss your wife or whatever you guys do, <laughs> touchy-feely things with your family, whatever. But, um, no, nah, I mean, it's, it's crazy. So we ended up not going over there till 5. We just kind of killed the day and hung at the beach. And I want to, dude, I can't, I can't, something's like eating me right now. It's, I've, I've grown up with friends that, will not like each other like that's been a almost constant in my life growing up and it's tough it's hard to like have that i don't like it i don't it makes it uh you know i obviously everybody can't always get along i get it but especially like with with today and then you know recently i had a buddy pass away in, in a knife fight that was i don't did we talk about it on the last podcast no you were telling me, me about it though okay so just like Stuff like that um, is just, and I want to. I want to see. I, I'd love to see it to like end. I I can't be the peacekeeper and like solve everything between everybody. I can't. I don't know all the details of like what the inner workings are. But I'd love to see more and more people in the reptile thing, or just in the world in general, like forgo their whatever their petty differences are and just like work it out and and not let it be like something that affects just themselves negatively and then everybody else around them negatively and start to crush that type of vibe. I, like, I just, I don't know, dude. I wish there was a magic like thing I could to, to flick, but it's not, it's not always we that simple. We talked about it a lot, not you and I, but just everybody around the, the barbecue tonight talked that, that exact topic came up two or three times in div- in regards to different things. You know, funny how so many of us in the reptile industry, butt heads over stuff that we love that's the same you know it doesn't really make a sense yeah but I, I I'm, just, I'm like I guess I'm on the fence of like even saying names because then it's like make it bigger than it needs to be you know there was people at the party tonight that were uh, not being friendly with each other no no not at all oh I was no, gonna definitely. say I didn't see anything no 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 everybody was definitely friendly at the party tonight yeah everybody, it was a super good time well, we could say names. I'll, yeah, I'll have some. I got a fun story about MJ while I'm at it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's Riley and MJ. Like they're not. And, oh. Yeah. Okay. But the but the interesting thing is, despite that that's happening, like, and you can see it on on, Riley, on uh, MJ's Instagram story, like when he's in the hospital, he was wearing Riley's shirt in that accident. Today. Today. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, I I don't know what to make of that. But I, th- I thought about them. Like when when I saw that picture of that car upside down, I thought about Riley and thought what, about how. What do you do if your buddy that you're arguing with dies in your reptile shirt? You know what I mean? How does that affect you? Like, oh yeah, I was having some petty argument. I don't know what the beef is that you're talking about, but boy, that would be a trip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're trying to hold something against somebody, and they end up dead in your shirt. Yeah, it was weird. Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah. I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know either. Yeah. Well, I don't want to pick on MJ because he was like the host with the most tonight, but are you writing notes for yourself? No, no. I just oh. remember that I, like people really wanted to hear the updates on the, the notebook thing that I've been taking. And, like, oh, if I, okay. keep I thought you were going to like be like, wow. No, I'm not taking notes. I was like, it wasn't that profound, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so at Schaumburg... Um, how many, how long ago was that now? Two weeks, three weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. Schomburg, I wasn't there. It was Father's Day. Yeah, well, I don't know what day it is today <laughs> or month or anything. Else. So it's a few July weeks ago, seventeenth. If you're listening to this as it airs, a few weeks ago, um, I uh, oh you're gonna oh never mind. I can't talk about that publicly. Well, I guess I can if it's yeah. Everyone's at my house today. Yeah, <laughs> great. Cool. Not forward. listening to the podcast because they're, they're hanging out with you. First retick fest ever, unannounced. Yeah, yeah it was a Patreon only kind of thing. 
But um, no, so we were at Schaumburg, and uh, MJ has been trying to get together with me forever to either do like a snake trap thing or get on the podcast with him and Steven and Desiree and all that kind of stuff. And um, we couldn't do it, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. And then after Saturday night after the auction, you're always really tired if you're vending at that point because that's a long day. And so I'm exhausted. And he's like, yeah, yeah, just hang around the lobby afterwards and we'll do, it'll just be like a whatever he wanted to do was like a five or ten minute thing. So just hang out. And then, so I went, everyone went back to our Airbnb and they're having dinner and, you know, just kind of relaxing and all this stuff. And I'm exhausted. I'm waiting in the lobby for MJ and I'm waiting, 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 waiting. And then they ended up going out somewhere and he's like, oh, hold on. I'm on my way back. So I'll be there in 30, 40 minutes. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And he just stood me up. <laughs> and uh, on the end of the longest day, it just made it like uh, maybe two and a half hours longer than it needed to be. Me sitting in the lobby of a hotel waiting for him and uh at what point are you, wait how long are you waiting at what point do you give up probably, well because he just kept saying like i'm almost there i'm oh, almost there i'm okay. almost so there the communication was staying open they never yeah yeah <laughs> so and then it just didn't happen because i was just like screw this going back so i went back to the airbnb and everybody that like kind of my crew was there and they're like where have you been what's going on how did they go and i was like ah oh, didn't happen you know what i mean he, he never he just never showed up which you know he just got busy whatever that kind of thing i'm always giving people the benefit of the doubt and i'm only giving you crap if you're listening to this now mj but uh yeah everyone's like that's so rude we should beat him up <laughs> <laughs> who wait 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 who kim <laughs> no no well i guess if we're naming names i mean it was never really like a serious thing, so I mean, people shouldn't it take it for like any it. It deep, deeper like than it, the it way, is. Yeah, the way but you yeah, said like it. Rob and Justin Lathrop are like, <laughs> "Oh, we'll go beat him up," like because all the all their wives and stuff were like, "That's so mean. That's so rude." They're like, yeah, what's up with that? Come on, I can't tell somebody that. You should know you're tired. Let's go beat him up. <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, maybe he just got busy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. But yeah, it was it was pretty funny. So Wait, what I, was it you were waiting for? I was waiting for MJ because he said he what? wanted to do uh he wanted to do like a quick interview with me oh. that night before I went back. Oh know? gosh, gosh. Well he definitely so. ended up freaking is that why he gave you extra freaking ball rubs on that uh first episode of the plug, the the reemergence of snake of um, maybe, TV. maybe, dude. When I was listening, I was like, I was like, damn, he's really stroking Garrett's eagle way harder than it needs nah, to be stroked yeah, right yeah, now. I, think. I was, like, I was like, yeah, he's got a great looking booth. It's fantastic, but like, you're talking about it like a little extra long. Maybe that was it because he felt bad for standing <laughs> you up in the freaking lobby. It all <laughs> makes sense now. Thanks for sharing the story. Now I'm tying it all together. Yeah, your booth's great, but it's not that great. Yeah, you it was just talk guilt. About it that it was guilt ridden. It was guilt ridden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll book. tell you what though, boy, you couldn't stay mad at him after that. Yeah. So you're talking about the Animal Bites TV firing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, that was weird. Like, uh, I didn't know that I was even subscribed to Animal Bites because I didn't know. YouTube existed when that channel was like really popping, but it popped up on my phone. I was like, what the heck is this? I didn't know that he was taking that channel over and going to MC that He's been playing with like what to do with it for a while. It's like, maybe I'll do this. But it's Brian Barczyk's channel. Right, right. His original channel. It was Snake Bites. Yeah. And then they turned it to Animal Bites and started some, and then then nothing, it just just, the vlog is daily. It just disappeared. The vlog like overshadowed it. Yeah. It was funny. I was reading through some of the comments just because I was like, oh, this is pretty cool that it's came back and everything. And a lot of people are like, you can't just not post for four years. I'm unsubscribing. And I was like, "Wow, cranky guy." I think I think Barcheck actually commented to a few, and he's like, "Well, actually, I've been posting every single day for four years on my other channel, but sorry to see you go." <laughs> you know what I mean? That reasoning sounded so. interesting. You can't post, not post for four years. I'm unsubscribed. Like that. I don't know. That logic didn't make any sense to me. I don't no, think that comment was actually there. Too. I think he made that up. Uh, you can go find it if you want. But I, I can't because my phone is recording the YouTube version. Well, Speaking of you're YouTube, you have to take my word for it. Oh, I can just use your phone and read the comments and be like, "No, that comment doesn't exist," because <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, so, a video. I'm unsubscribing. So Thomas, Thomas <laughs> didn't do it, but I thought we had a pretty good. We we're like discussing like what kind of uh, you know vlog video for Reach Out Reptiles should we do today? 
And he's like, well, I don't know. You'll have to introduce me to people and stuff. And I was like, I don't really want to be involved. I, th- I should just be candid and let's prep you to like ask some questions. And, and you, I mean, you can film me or if you need something, tell me or whatever. But I don't really want to like, you know, mentally run this, this ship tonight. So uh, do you remember the questions we were coming up with on the way there? Um, I remember that one of them was something along the lines of like, it was the premise. There was a premise that was supposed yeah. to go around every question. It was like, so how does it feel? Basically, it was like this. It was, this isn't verbatim, but it was like, how does it feel to be uh, at a barbecue that only you were invited to? And all these people listening would, watching the, or watching the vlog, like, would have loved to attend, but they weren't cool enough to be invited to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty brutal paraphrase, but it's accurate. Yeah. I thought it would be funny because, yeah, because you have all these people here. And I was trying to get them to, like, capture the 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 energy and the you know like the networking to be fair i don't know i don't know if you guys ended up doing that or not but it would be great to see somebody's answer to that question who's at the barbecue i don't think he did it didn't happen i don't think he did thomas is way too nice for that stuff but you and i thought it would have been hilarious (laughs) oh dude we're dying so yeah the question was something like that like hey what's it like being at one of these barbecues and and you know what i was the reason why i brought it up because of that comment was like wouldn't it be funny I was like, people always watch your videos. And by and large, we have like amazing supporters in the industry. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I think sometimes those people don't realize how important they are. Even if, like, I know I feel bad because I don't get back with comments to all of them all mm, the time. Maybe you can't. It's unrealistic to. Maybe. But, but I do hope that they understand how much. I appreciate it. I'm sure you're the same way oh, too. Oh, absolutely, man. I'll try to make through. a bit like I'll try to throw out that like just express my gratitude uh, on right. multiple occasions. And I even if I don't say it out loud, like I'm I'm constantly thinking about how blessed I am A to be alive, especially after today's events, and B to just like have people that believe in what I'm doing and yeah. like to, enough to support it. That's great. Right. It's like amazing. But there's always that person with the unsolicited comment and opinion of your life. <laughs> yeah, but those are like, there, oh, those thanks. people are there to make you feel better about all the other people that don't have that comment. <laughs> I guess so. But the premise <laughs> of the question was like, hi, so uh, you're going to be on my YouTube channel. What are your comments for those people unsolicited that are watching who weren't here tonight because they weren't invited? <laughs> so I wanted to turn it back, you know what I mean, and have people comment about everyone else that's on YouTube. And you know what? I'm sure by and large it would be supportive, but if someone threw some snarky ones in there, I'd be okay with that. That would be pretty, pretty, pretty oh, funny. Oh, man, I wish it had happened. Yeah, video commenting. Dang it. On the commenters. <laughs> so. Sex to be you, loser! <laughs> All right, maybe we need some of this next one here. <laughs> uh, I wanted, I've had, so like as I mentioned, I've got two mm-hmm. bottles of the Double Rye at home already, so I'd like to try the rende- Rendezvous Rye, which is rendezvous rye. what was hitting so high up on the shelf. And it was potentially, one, so this one was sitting down low, like on a barrel, and that, that one was up high on the shelf. And this one, he said, it was like, oh, it's tw- uh, twenty seven ninety nine or whatever. And I was like, what a, about the other bottle up there that looks exactly the same? Is that twenty nine ninety nine too? Because if it is, go ahead and pull it down and we'll get it. And then it was seventy nine ninety nine. Thank you, Derek. Um, and he's like, I was like, oh, okay. I'm not trying to pay that much for whiskey. And yeah, but we, st- well, we still have it. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be good. It better be good if it's freaking four times the price of the other one. Oh, it's got a solid nose. <laughs> oh, dude. It's got nose like it's, Pinocchio. It's got the nose of that. It, it's kind of got that MD. Oh, very, yeah. MWND. Rye. Yeah, well, it is rye. It's like a blend of straight rye whiskeys. And if you get your eyes in there, they water. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that, it's kind of more similar because I've had the double rye. The double oh, rye is a lot more it's like actually, grassy yeah, and light. That's good. I like that one. It's a smooth rye. This smooth. one has a lot more of the. This is not the Whiskey Wimps channel, Brian. This oh, is sorry. Searchable as well. All right, 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 right. So. <laughs> Whiskey helps me get more in touch with the reptiles. Ooh, speaking of, like, the lace monitor, super cool. Oh, yeah. What was her name? Alice. Alice. Yeah. So MJ had a pair of laces, and the male yeah. was, like, twice the female size. Yeah. I was, was like, are they going to eat each other? 
That would be really sad if you had a pair of lace monitors and one ate the other one. And Alice was super. She came out like onto four different people or something. Yeah, like that. dude, she she <laughs> jumped off. Right I'll out. actually. Um, I think you handed her off to me at one time, or was that Des handed her um, off to me? The only handoff I did with her was her jumping out of my arms onto Andrew Asfero's back. Oh, no, no. Like she jumped off of your arms and like landed with her throat on the corner of the desk that one time. Well, not at the desk. It was the top of the enclosure. <laughs> was the, she, she's the one that jumped to her idiot. idiot <laughs> He's like being all nice and careful with her. And she jumps and she lands like karate chop to the neck. All right. On, right on the corner of this. Not the corner, the edge. The corner is like the pointy part of the table. It was oh, the edge. Okay. Not the, the edge. Corner. The, Come on, this dude. corner right here. It sounded like I tried to kill to this thing involuntarily. She's fine. Corner. <laughs> She's fine. She came back onto me and then she jumped onto Andrew's back later. Went, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to produce a bunch of healthy baby lace monitors and maybe I'll get a baby since I was like, such a good care of her. Or, yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Though he said he's getting a normal lace too, but those uh, those lace monitors are something else. They're pro- like they're epic looking. Really not probably the pet monitor to get. They're no. every, everyone thinks they're like the panda pied version of a water monitor. They're not that monitor. Dude, the reason that I still don't have a monitor is because I just don't feel that like I have the time to pay the attention to them that they need. Yeah, they do really like that kind of like interaction and stuff. I would need to be, I mean... Maybe but you get it to them, like, with daily feeding and stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose so. Plus, you have kids. Like, if you had, a, a like, a chill monitor that you could kind of semi-supervise with the kids, once it was big and established and everything like that, right. then, you know, he can kind of just come hang with you, stuff like that. So, yeah. so something like a black throat. The water monitors are great, black especially throat if you get... Epic, dude. They just look so like like their head is, looks like like dinosaur, like Terminator lizard. Just oh, it's so cool. Dude. I remember the first yeah filming with the uh, Kira at the uh, Super Show. Oh yeah, with that black throat, right. and she said it smelled like butterscotch or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. some kind of dessert at the yeah, 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 yeah. My daughter Kira, yeah, she was tiny back then, man. That was pretty small. That was her first uh, big one, and then she did the Kira goes to Iguana Fest. Yeah, on the Dave's Triple channel. B TV interview. That's a, a wildlife yep. warrior. Yeah, yeah. Man, she's still all about that life. That's for sure. She's a pretty crazy kid. Did you know that I had broken my jaw with a black throat monitor one time? Mm, yeah, you did. We talk, I feel like we talked about it on the podcast. Oh, maybe I don't know. And then you're like, well, you're questioning that maybe they were venomous because of that. Experience. No, that was a different. That was a different time. Actually, oh, that was a much did, smaller one. To quote Stephen Cush, you know, if you, maybe you weren't such an idiot. <laughs> maybe if you weren't, maybe <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> yeah, we we're talking about. I got bit by a, a scrub python today, and he's like, "Yeah, or just don't get bit by being an idiot." <laughs> Something like that. Like, Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, the the generous. Uh, uh, host of our our location sponsor of this podcast, <laughs> Des is like Stephen, be nice. He's like the shoe fits. <laughs> oh, he cracks I love, me up. I love both Des, of them. Dude. They both, both cracked me up. Steve, he was awesome tonight with the freaking cigar like experience. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had never smoked a cigar. He was checking he it out, and feeling it out. He went. And, he went like went to full Southie mode for a second. Just like. Oh, I'm gonna be. I'm watching the. I'm watching the game. It's a Sunday. I'm like, what? Do you, what do you want from me? <laughs> it was hilarious, dude. To see what him going up. About? You didn't. Oh, you missed his whole episode where he like went to like a full South Boston like. No, I don't know what you're talking football about. Football fan. What happened? He was like trying to get embodied the character of somebody who would be like smoking a cigar in his mind. Oh, and he, he was doing an impersonation. Full, like, South Boston character. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It was, it was pretty amazing. Also, no, I, I thought you were talking about, because he was like throwing a fit, because he's like, I've never smoked a cigar. And you're like, well, here, try some. And like everybody stopped and just watched him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, why is everyone looking at me? And you're like, no, no, like puff it more like this. And he's like. <laughs> and, and he's like. He was like trying to give it a little. He's like, like I, I don't. It first. Do you like it? And he's like, not when everyone's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Oh, it was good. But. Oh, anyway. It was a good time, man. It was, it was a. It was a good time. It was nice because the you know Super Show was supposed to happen at Pomona, but it didn't work out. And then 
We still got Rami. Yeah, we Rami was there. Dave, that was great. Our Dave Kaufman. Oh, there's a bunch of a bunch of folks there. It was great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'll tell you what. I was surprised by MJ's collection. Mm. I I was like, oh yeah, he's got a ball python, and then I knew he was getting into this, some cool stuff because you hear like risp, whispers and rumors. But I haven't been following his content, mm. you know, lately. So I, so I watch, I've, I've seen him on Instagram, so like I, I'd seen a lot of the snakes and lizards and stuff. Like when he got the laces, I was like, oh dude, he got lace monitors. See, I hadn't seen. Okay, so I, when he was first starting his channel. I was watching it all the time, and I was like, this guy's hilarious. You know what I mean? I love watching this content. But it was all ball python stuff. So, Oh, when he did like the skit, like going to the Super Show for the first time, like running yeah. get left behind at yeah, the in and out it was stuff. Really, he had a <laughs> lot of really creative dude. stuff in the beginning. It was good. Know? Yeah, that, that episode when they're going to the Super Show. Like, right. Yeah, that was – I loved that episode, dude. That so. was – but but getting because, left behind and having to chase the car down the street. <laughs> it was just so good. That was yeah. funny. But yeah, I I, uh, I lost interest with you know within a certain amount of time just because and I don't know the content was still good but it it didn't have there was so many, uh, strong so many reptile anchor to... for me just mm. because I'm not into ball pythons nothing against them it just wasn't my thing so now having kind of like lost contact with that stuff and then coming to his place and he's like. He's got all of pythons, pythons there, Timor pythons, white lip pythons. Those got, Timors are sick. My, I think my top favorite, though, was that scrub that bit me. She was amazing. She was awesome. I've got such Definitely. a soft spot for scrubs. Yeah, she was He's gorgeous. got false water cobras. He's got boiga. He's got, oh, my white gosh, lips. tons of uh, tons of stuff. He's got the monitors, you know. He's got freaking alpacas running around in his backyard. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're popping their heads over. The, they're just tall enough that like their nose and eyes pop over the backyard fence. And they're looking at you like, right? She What's, going on, there? What's yeah. going on? What's going on? You kids, keep it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're super funny looking because they're like fresh shorn. So <laughs> looks like you, you trim their fur with a lawnmower or something like that. Big poofy heads. But uh, they're definitely good hosts. And Lily too. You know, there's like. Being very welcoming. Yeah, I had a, a nice little chat with her at the party and stuff like that. She, I had a good, I had a good chat with her. Yeah, um, she seems to me like in some ways kind of reminds me of my own wife. She's like, oh, you know, like you know, I didn't know people were like that into reptiles. I was never really an anti reptile person, but not really for him. But that's his thing. And it's cool, and I like these ones a little bit, sort of. But I'm not allowed to hold them, you know. <laughs> Stuff and his like dad, that. dude, his dad, like, was awesome. His I loved character. his dad, dude. He came, he was just like, he was so friendly and just nice and like appreciative of everybody that was there hanging out yeah. because he recognizes that reptiles are something that really, like, kind of like are something that sa like saved MJ in a way. Like, they're like the thing that the positive thing he needed in his life. That's how he sees it. Yeah, his, his reptiles. His dad was super like, "Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for coming, and thank you guys for being there." So, do you think? I mean, now you saying that, and me looking back at kind of like the the guest list or whatever. Do you think that he intentionally got together a bunch of people that influenced him? Is that what that was? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. So he just kind of threw a party for everybody that was cool. You know, one one thing uh, that you know was like cool about helping him in some way or another right but yeah mj really gets it done doesn't he he uh he gets in there rolls his sleeves up and he he makes stuff happen yeah for sure yeah so throws that energy in man there's no doubt about that pretty crazy yeah that was a good time that was a good time i, I was it was fun to sit back with desiree and steven from Zoo Dreams, Cold Blood Cafe, or whatever. Dude, Des, a bunch I love of Des, stuff. dude. She's so freaking just like unapologetically herself, and it's like is and it's awesome. It's refreshing. Mm -hmm. Just the stuff. It's super refreshing. Like just the stuff that comes out of her mouth is just like. <laughs> yeah, she was just. She had a whole. We had a whole like probably hour conversation where she's like going through her phone and laughing about how many times I popped up in her phone and like different times. Just because I stop in there quite a bit because I'll go load up on their. They have the best rodents, you know, so I actually drive from Pittsburgh to Indianapolis and just load up on mass quantities of that stuff, you know, because, and, and I think anybody that's ever even tried them knows it. Nobody tries them and goes back to someone else. But, um, 
I, I would always pop out, and then I would go say, are you going to say no? You go uh, to somebody else? Lane Labs is down the road from me, and they, oh, have, and they have rabbits. He, oh, oh, man. But Des has pigs. Mm, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, then, like, well, okay. And a lot of people are like, oh, the pigs are too big or whatever, but the smallest size pigs that they have are the this size is, of a jumbo This is the kind of rat. honest idiot I am. I talk about a competitor <laughs> one that our sponsor is yeah, freaking yeah. Coldplay. I, this, is my, this is me. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's refreshing how much of an idiot you are. I mean, how honest. <laughs> yeah. I don't meet any, that many people that are that idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep me around. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with No, I don't you. have anything against Lane Labs. I think they're great. I just, if you're ordering frozen rodents, I just don't think it gets better than no, cold No, no, definitely not. I mean, the, the amount of, like like Stephen was saying on the, the plug there, like the, the ice, like it always shows up. They're always solid as a rock. I always wondered, yeah. like, so because I would order from them first. I'm like, why is this... These rats are fresh. You know what I mean? Like, and I didn't understand because I've used, I just used to go by price and I use suppliers from everywhere. And then when I started getting their stuff, I'm like, their stuff is like significantly different. Well, because of that flash freezing process. Yeah, they flash freeze them on dry ice and then put them in the freezer. And I remember Forrest telling me, and I, I was like, bing, light bulb goes on. I'm like, that makes total sense. This is like when you open them and you thaw them out, it's like a, having a fresh killed rodent instead of something where like the skin's peeling off and it's a little bit green inside because it took a day and a half oh, to... Oh, man. Oh. Have you had those? I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? I think everybody has. I mean, maybe. You feed something and like... They, I would never admit a it. Constrictor, <laughs> a constrictor wraps it and it's like... It oh, pops yeah, everywhere. Actually, yes, yes, yes. I've squeezes it out that. like a toothpaste I absolutely tube. absolutely have had that. That yes. doesn't happen there, you know? Yeah. It's like fresh killed rodents. So, but Dude, anyway, yeah, re- piglets. Sorry. For those who don't know, like those piglets, they're they're actually kind of like my favorite food source. How um, big do they get? Well, I mean, pit, they're pigs, so they get very big. But how big do they? How offer small them? do they get? Is the key? Sure, but how big do they offer? Because I'm talking about like I'm, I need ten pound rabbits. So I mean, I know oh, pigs yeah. can obviously get. Them, oh but yeah, they offer for them sure. Big? I I I think forty pounds I've got there before, but the smallest ones are the size of a jumbo rat. So if you have something that's eating rats, they're like 0.75 pounds, right? So even a little smaller than a jumbo rat. And uh, so if you're feeding something and you want to offer some diversity that you know in their diet, because you have a, a whole different vitamin and mineral content. So yeah, yeah. you just shove some fish oil up their butt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just showed him. If you guys uh, need a good laugh TV. right now, and you have not gone and seen the uh, Instagram video. Of Rob Roush uh, showing how to uh, hide supplements in your feeders, gut load uh, a rodent with fish oil, and you need a good laugh, and you've got a good sense of humor, or a sick sense of humor. (laughs) It's a sick sense of humor. Oh my god, I was dying. If you're the kind of person that like has a uh, a questionable mind, someone will say something innocent, and then you think it's dirty or whatever. If you watch this video. This video is so. I mean, long story short, like Rob, I, I'm like, give put a pill in the rodent and feed it to the snake, right? We do fish oil for give them some extra fatty content and vitamins and stuff. And you know, I just always open the rodent's mouth and put the pills in there. He likes to go in the other. Oh way. my god! Just let him watch the video. We don't even talk about it. Oh, I just come on. Our our our, our listeners are like. I, I'm a fairly thick-skinned person. I don't know if that's the same for like everybody around all the time. I mean, it, let's not talk about that here, Gary. Let's just. <laughs> all right, you can go watch it on my IGTV. Oh man, no. My only point was that it was funnier when we tried to make it like edit stuff out or make it. Yeah, it's just discreet. like oh, you go watch it. Let me keep talking about it. <laughs> All right, tag, you're up. All right, uh, hard left turn. Well, do you have a, a diving deep in the shallow end uh, uh, subject for this evening? Because I don't. You always have them provided. I I just participate in that. <laughs> I've never. I don't think I've ever brought one to the table. Right? It's always you bringing it to the table, or or sourcing it from somebody and then bringing it to the table. That's true. Yeah, I don't think that I've ever actually presented one. Yeah. No, the last one was Thomas. Yeah, I sourced that one. I don't yeah, know you sourced you sourced them from Bradley. And you sourced them from Thomas, but you source them and bring them. I don't. Correct. I just participate. 
Hmm. You, are you are you like looking? I'm, this isn't me like all of a sudden surprising. Well, guess what? This time I have one. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying here. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. I'm trying to think of one really quick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is this is our fastest turnaround because we were you know fashionably late for the first time on the last podcast. This one is kind of like fashionably on time, which is being early since the last one was a little bit late. So I guess maybe you didn't have time to prepare. I, don't know, I only had a couple on. weeks to come up with a stupid question. <laughs> no, it's okay. I can take about thirty seconds and figure it out. No, that, you're not allowed to have that much time to think. You just need to come up with a real quick like. Uh, Mm, I'm trying to help you out, and my brain is not I, working. So I have one. I was just uh, I didn't think it was that like shallow, but I'm gonna go with it anyway. Um, so you know you hear all the jokes and stuff about people with cell phones. You know you have smartphones now, and uh, I don't know the joke that comes to mind just as an example of what I'm talking about. Is someone came from the past, and they see everybody with smartphones, right? Mm. They came from pre-smartphones, and they're like, "What is this?" You know, like, oh, it's this electronic device I carry it everywhere, and you can access uh, any well, information. How far in the past are we talking? Because somebody says let's electronic say nine, device. Let's like, say what? <laughs> okay, well, let's say so let's say they're from 1950. Okay, they come they come forward, and you're like, yeah, I, I've got this device, and it gives me access to uh, talk to anybody I want. I can video people from around the world, and I have access to all of the world's accumulated knowledge through the World Wide Web. I can learn anything, Google it whenever I want to. I've got something interesting to talk about on this. Okay, go ahead. And then they say, wow, great. What do you use it for? You're like, oh, you know, mostly watching videos of cats doing dumb stuff and things like that. <laughs> so the Entertainment. Question, yeah. So the question is this. Having the power of all that information, does it make us smarter or dumber? It depends on your definition of smart or dumb, I suppose. Well, I don't know if dumber is even, is that a real word? Dumb and dumber. <laughs> it's certainly a word. Can't make a movie. Dumberer called it. If it's you can't go dumberer. Well, well that was the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, it's a play on being dumb and not using proper grammar. Oh, okay. Although dumb, dumb actually means uh, that you can't speak, right? Because most likely you can't hear, and it's a combination, right? Deaf yeah. and dumb. Um, however, does it make us smarter or dumber? Well, as as a as a species, I say it makes us smarter because we've achieved it as a whole, as a group. Like now we have the ability to compound Cum on top of that. Like, yeah, yeah, cumulative, cumulative knowledge. knowledge and like being able to compound and build off of that. Like it's been happening with technology for the past, you know, eons, depending on what you consider technology. I consider alcohol to be technology of some sort. So, um, it, as a individual, it absolutely can work against you in limiting the things you actually know if you don't have the phone. Like, you know, if the example is just Googling something. Everybody thinking knows, like, oh, let's just ask Google. Like, oh, Google knows. Right. <laughs> I don't have no fucking idea. But if you ask Google, like, obviously the answer is right there. And this brings me to what is something interesting that I've thought about since before. And this is going to go, this is perfect for going deep in the shallow and you know, your shallow cell phone topic. Um, okay, now follow me here. I'm following. We're going. We're Here going. We in, go. We're going into religion. We're going into oh space time. All of it at once. Yes. The Earth, as it spins, twenty four hours, as it rotates around the sun, three hundred sixty five days, and it's like a top, right? Going. Okay. And just like a top, spinning super fast, maybe making a little revolution, has that wobble, right? Like. A top will generally have that slow wobble. Like a spider ball pipe. Sure. <laughs> that, the Earth is doing the same thing, just like a top. It, the axis is slowly wobbling. And when I say slowly, I mean, you know, I'm talking about that slow wobble. You know what I'm talking about? Like when a top does that about. little tiny slow or wobble. You, yeah, you spin a quarter or whatever, and it starts to slow down, and it, it makes like a little circle at the top, and, and it gets the top wider. Is better and because goes, you got, the top is a better example because you got that spindle coming off, like the Earth's imaginary axis that it rotates sure. on. And it takes about 26,000 years for one rotation of that wobble. Really? And yes. And if you split that into 12, it's roughly about 2,000 something years. And the point is, if you break up that wobble into the face of a clock, the axis points at different constellations in the sky 
to signify the age of time in which we are living. Pisces being the one that we've been in since the birth of Christ, basically, right? Okay. Pisces. It's the fish. That's why the Christians have, you know, the Christians. That's why there's the, the you know what I'm talking about, the fish. Yeah. It's, okay. it's symbolizing, yeah. of, you know, being fish in water, I guess. So we're all fish in water. And it's the age of Pisces. There's a song, a classic song. I'm sure any of you that, like, lived through the 70s or even listened to, I don't know, the, what, what movie was it in? The Dawning of the Age of Aquarius. You know, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Hey, because we've been cusping, you know, we're kind of at the end of 2,000 years-ish. Okay. And we've been going through Pisces, and the Earth is now starting to point towards Aquarius. Mm-hmm. Pisces is the age of the fish. If you look at the water as knowledge, we're just fish swimming around in this knowledge, just trying to figure it all out, like, what's going on here? We're just swimming around in all this knowledge, just trying to, like, you know, figure it all out. And then we're moving into Aquarius. We're definitely getting deep on this one. Who is yeah. the water bearer. Mm, okay. And instead of being a fish in the water... We're now moving into the age of the time where we take the water up in the bucket, if you use water as knowledge, uh, and carry it around with us everywhere. On cell phones. Cell phone. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so here's my uh, throw on top of that. You were talking about like, uh, you know, since the age of Christ, basically till now, that's your 2,000 years and the fish and all that kind of stuff. Well... The that fish symbol kind of came from there was a part in the Bible where Jesus is getting his disciples and they were fishermen. And he says, you know, hey, leave that behind and I'll make you fishers of men. Right? So instead of just going to get your food for the day, he's like, Let, let's let's cast our net for souls. Let's let's in other words, inspire and bring other people, you know, let's Let's go for, instead of like our, our basic daily needs and worrying about that, let's go for something bigger. MJ and I were actually talking about this. Like, you know, he's breeding ball pythons and he's saying how fast he sells out. He's like, instantly. And he goes, it's like you with the super dwarfs and you sell out instantly. So we were kind of talking about like, well, why is that? You know, and it's not because it's like, I have this snake and I'm going to go put this ad out and that's how I'm going to sell it. We, th- we basically in... kind of dissecting our approach is that both of us are trying to build an industry right and we're giving something back and it and it it brings people in i think anybody listening to this podcast is probably here for the same reason because they've seen you podcast is trying to figure out how you're tying in selling snakes into uh jesus christ inspiring people to go and like (laughs) well okay so the tie in (laughs) Just wait for it. Just wait for it. I mean, I see everything through the sale of snakes, apparently. I know. I know. But no, I was actually talking more about like me and MJ. Okay. Like, because we're very different people. Sure. So, what is it that we're doing? Instead of worrying about the the single fish or like the meal for the day, we're t- we're we're like fishing for men, right? We're we're investing in an industry and building it up, and we're we're here because we're excited, and the fish come as a byproduct, if you will. Neither one of us is sales oriented or sales focused, even though I'm using it to tie in and everything. Okay, like I'm following that. you now. Okay, so if that relates to sh- the shift from you know the fish to carrying the water, and here's our cell phones and we have all this information, I think the heart and soul of this next era though should be the same. So instead of like going for that single thing that's going to feed me for today benefiting the world around us so that there are more resources made available to us whenever we need them. It, the shift to this carrying around of all this knowledge should be how do we use it? Not just can I get it? Here's the information. I can have it. How can we with this power in our hands be the the next age of fishers of men, if you will, instead of fishermen. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I Are do. You carrying I do. That? Yeah, so absolutely. I, I think that's the bigger question. If it's going to shift, so that's, that's great that we have all this information, technology, power at the tips of our fingertips. And what? Yeah, how are you going to tap into what that are you information? Going to it's right there, your fingertips. With that. Right. Right. What is the reality going to be in the world and how are you going to affect it using that information and knowledge, which is power, 
And I would say that a lot of this circles back around to what you're talking about, about your two friends fighting, because a lot of times we're picking up information and using it to beat each other up with. Instead of saying, hey, look, the information's there. The information is easy. You're not a genius because you memorized a piece of information that was just made available to you. You picked it up and walked around with it. But what are you doing with that information? If you're just going around beating people up with it, it's the same thing as people, you know, you talk about the Bible-thumping Christians. Let me hit you with some scripture to make you feel guilty. You know what I'm saying? You're like, what are you, what are you doing? How's that helping anybody? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. If you have all this wisdom, knowledge, you know, at your fingertips, you should be more empowered than ever. And it's it's kind of an equalizer because anybody could. Now, was the other thing MJ and I were talking about is that, you know, people that talk about it, you know, in the snake selling analogy, like, oh, the market is this and the market is that and and it's so bad now. You can see, you can see that they are saying like, so there is this market, it's this entity, it's this thing that was built, and I want some of it, and I'm entitled to some of it, and I'm not getting it, so it makes me sad. And they never thought, well, why is that there? Who built that market? Who made that thing? And I told MJ, I was like, MJ, the reason why you're selling ball python, my situation is a little bit more unique because my snakes are way more niche. So there's not too many places to go to get them. But in MJ's case, everybody's breeding ball pythons. There's quite a lot of places to go get them. I said, they're not buying the snake anymore. They're buying you. And he's building that industry, continually expanding it finding new takes and new ways and bringing the information to people in new and exciting ways like his channel when they first started. You know what I'm saying? And so you don't feel like a victim anymore because you you kind of have, you end up with your hands on the reins and you can steer things. Not, not completely because there's other people working there too. But yeah, man, if we, if we have all this knowledge at, at our fingertips, let's develop some wisdom and the heart to care about somebody's soul, somebody's heart, pulling them up. You know what I mean? Like, I really enjoyed visiting with MJ and Andrew. And I, you know, we talked shop, we did all this kind of stuff, but I, I made sure to tell him like 12 times through the night, you know what, bro? I'm just really glad you're here. He's like, you, you like the collection? Thanks, man. That means so much to me. And I was like, it just means so much to me that you're here to show it to me. You know what I mean? Just kind of. I do. I do. I had a lot of moments with people like that tonight, too, which was nice. Not just. Uh, that yeah. was a cool perspective that it had. Yeah. <laughs> the mortality. Yeah. yeah the mortality yeah. element of it. Right. Yeah. It was, it was good. You know, there's a lot of people that I was talking with tonight that I definitely felt that, you know. My my buddy Calvin, when he was taking off, we were talking about it. Was like, yeah, like, because he, he had a rough year. He just graduated, you know. He had a rough rough year of 2020 you know the whole covid thing and sure in that situation i know he had a lot of like rough uh times where it was really difficult and i was like you know we're always we together you know we got a we got a group there's people we can reach out to and like you need a little help and a little talking through like just have you know, people to reach out to you know we got each other you need help raise each other up you know mm -hmm. and that's what you can do with that information that's what you can do with this this power this ability that we've been given to just communicate with anybody anywhere Use it for good. What's an example of a rough time that you've had recently? Recently? Yeah, and then, and what did you do to get out of it? Was there someone there to help you, or do you have some kind of way? Because it's been a rough year for a lot of us. I've been I've been mostly blessed, dude. I mostly just turn and look at how blessed I actually am. I mean, sure, we all go through a little rough patches, but I I always. I've always been really good at counting my blessings, you know, no matter how rough I may have encountered reality to be, uh, whether it was self-induced or not, um, to be able to at least look and be like, well, it's, you know, it's not that bad. But there's a pattern, right? So something bad happens to you circumstantially, right? And then you, you start to feel sorry for yourself. And then as you become a more mature person, you figure out how to get out of that downward spiral. Because if you feed that, you'll just keep wallowing in it forever. And some people never escape that point. True. But as you learn, you, you add these tools and experiences 
you know, to your life where you're like, you know what? When I start to have that downward spiral, I start to cry because I don't have shoes. I remember the guy without legs. And then I, I realize how truly blessed I am. Yeah, that's why I, I follow that same type of logic. Like, exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, and it, so my point is we're all still exposed to it. Nobody's immune. We've just trained ourselves to quickly pull out of it with our experience and our tools. So what's your experience? What are your tools? So you're saying you're mostly blessed, but those little triggers happen to us frequently and constantly. It happened to me at least 12 times today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think this accident that my friends have gone through and survived helped me get there even faster because we had that perspective. You know, but what what's one that, you know, that you've... Recently? I mean... <sighs> I don't know. They seem so trivial, you know, like some some small things because everything's mostly good for me. But honestly, like it, it really is. Some, some trivial things can ruin your day. I mean, there was a guy that was things, things saying that are, we cut in line at the rental thing, and yeah, he was well, ready th- to have a meltdown. Honestly, the thing, the thing out of my, things out of my control, just little small things that are resolved quickly with just a little bit of information. Like, okay, I was reaching out to, but I sent a message with the buddy. Remember, I told you the night the night fight buddy. Um, his brother, you know, had reached out, and that's how I found out about it, of course. And we were going back and forth. We both shared some, you know, darker history when we were both dealing with addiction and back in the day. And um, he just, like, he didn't read my message. He said something about, like, oh, I'd love to, you know, thank you for, like, reaching out. Thank you for talking to me. I, like, shared a, like, song that he had written a long time ago, and I, like, played it. And it, somehow the message had never sent, even though I sent it, like, a couple of years ago. I was like, dude. I already sent it. I was like, yeah, I played that like two years ago, dude. Sending me like, look, I still remember this song. And he finally got it. And he's like, oh, yeah, we wanted to touch base. And I was like, well, just, uh, I'm like, you know, what did I say in the message? Like, just get a hold of me. You know, sometime tomorrow between 10 and 2, you know, just give me a call. I'm, uh, and I can't get my phone because it's recording us to read exactly what it said. But like, he didn't see it for a couple of days or something. And he got back with like, between 10 and 2, what's that supposed to mean? Like, there's a thing, like, when you're smoking a, a meth pipe, like, you turn the thing between 10 and 2. Oh. And he thought I was making some reference to, like, that he was still on, like, he just went to some dark place real quick where he thought I was, like, making a reference to, like, that he was still a drug addict or something. And he came back just, like, all hot. And, like, I haven't touched that stuff for, like, you know, decade and a half or whatever it was. And, like, this is bullshit. And I was like, whoa, dude. I was like, I just said, call me tomorrow between 10 and 2. Yeah. PM, like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you know, just give me a call. Like, it's like, chill out. <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's like, oh, sorry. I, sorry, I totally just thought you were thinking I was still like on drugs or something. And I was like, nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. That was like, it's just so just a little bit of like conversation, I guess, even though we didn't even have the phone call yet, just through text, just like to clarify, like, no, it's like, let's have a little, you know, just a little back and forth. I guess that's how I yeah. solve it. And talking to somebody. So my point is, or my, my answer to your question is just a little communication. Like even if, if I find myself in a dark space or, or something like that, uh, to actually talk to somebody about it and like be like, this is what I'm struggling with and why I'm struggling with it and be honest about what it is that I'm struggling with, which is not easy. You know, it's not always easy if you're really struggling with something. Sometimes it's kind of, it's really hard, especially if it's something hard. you feel shame about. Exactly. You hold it close yes. and protect it. Absolutely. When you should be, you know, crucifying that. You know what I mean? Yes. Exposing it to the light and just letting it burn up. But you, yes, you protect absolutely. It. I've gotten better at that over the years. I was a very secretive person. I was very, you know, introverted. I'm, I'm still an introvert by nature, but I, you know, I've very. I mean, some people be like, you're an introvert? What are you talking about? I am. I am an and introvert. It has to do with what fills your gas tank. You know yeah. what I mean? Alone time or together time. Yeah, yeah. I definitely like it. But if, if together time does too. Or maybe I'm just like, I don't know if, if together time is actually filling my gas tank. I'm still enjoying it though. You know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's filling a different type of tank, I guess, is the way I look at it. Uh, I definitely like my alone time. I like to meditate. I like to just exercise by myself. But then I like to do the push-ups with you guys today and, like, get other people involved in it and, like, like sure. let's do this together. Um, but, yeah, just being able to communicate, I think, is the key. And that ties back into the phone thing because, like, that's what the phone is for. Yeah. Is to communicate. That yeah. is what the telephone was invented for. Pick it up and call somebody. Was to communicate. Yeah, especially if you're having a hard time. Yeah. For sure pick it up and use it for what it was intended for to right. communicate with your fellow man. Yeah. That's how that's how I solve it. Yep.
Hmm. I think sometimes we're afraid that we're going to bother somebody. Do you know why I think that is? Because I think sometimes when we do need to talk to someone, instead of talking to them what we need to talk to them about, we just bother them instead. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't really kind of want to tell you what I'm going through right now, but I sort of need someone to talk to you. Yeah? Yeah? You're not going to ask me the question I need you to ask me that you don't know what it is? Oh, oh, that, no, that's okay. I can see you're busy. I'll just let you go. Instead of being like, hey, man, I, I'm in a low spot. I need someone to talk to. Can you give me a minute? And that can be tough over even on the phone. Like it's definitely through text. Your text is impossible. But even on a phone call, it can be unless you're really in tune with that person, like to pick up the little subtlety in their voice that might be that little catch where like, well, what's going on, man? Like yeah. is like everything okay? You know, like it, it can be tough over the phone unless you really uh, like I said, if you really can pick up that subtle thing. In person it's a lot easier. You can look sure. at somebody and it's just like, Oh man, you're clearly like something's wrong with you. Yeah. Um but over the phone, yeah, it's, it's a little more difficult. Or we need to learn to ask better is what I'm saying. Just sure, yeah, put yeah. the problem there. And and I know it's not easy, but the alternative is way worse. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So put the ask out there. You know, just throw some vulnerability to the wind and and uh, yeah, say what you such mean. such a hard ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, how's that working out for you anyway? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You keep it to yourself some more, huh? Yeah. How's that been for you? Mm. Mm. That's nice to let it out. Freedom. Freedom. I don't know where to go from here, dude, honestly. I mean, oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about my notebook. That's right. I am keeping up with it slightly. You know, I've, I'm using it. I've still, I've got... Things under there, and basically, this is your like daily to do notebook that we talked about on the last podcast. right from the last podcast. That people were like, I want to know if Brian's keeping up with that thing because sometimes I'll say like, Oh, I'm gonna do like a diet thing, and then I'm like, Yeah, just get an ice cream. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely keeping up. I use it for some notes things too, like if something's important, like like how we're gonna do the the whiskey wimps formula coming up potentially. I write some notes down there, but um, here's one thing about the list as I'm looking at it. Um, it there's a couple things that like sometimes I'll write down write in and I feel like I'm I have such mixed emotions about writing in to make sure I do some kind of family time stuff on my notes. I feel like I don't know why, but but I write it separately outside the list like it's not part of my 1 through 8. It's just like up there mm-hmm. in bigger letters and I it, this is just what I've done like yesterday for example, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I, I went fishing with Eli cuz he'd been talking about wanting to go and we went and I had it written big there. I didn't need to go look at the list to do it. It was like we just woke up and we went. But I still had it written down because it was, I felt like it was important. And, but I don't cross it out like I do everything on the list. That So what I do is if I, if I complete the task that I have on my list, I cross it out. And then if I don't complete it, I circle it and like add it to the list at the top tomorrow to be like, oh, you need to do that like now. But the things that I put on there that are things that I don't feel are the to-do list, the family stuff, the fishing, the playing baseball, catch with Noah, I write it real big all caps and then I put a check mark next to it to acknowledge that it did happen because you don't want to cross it off because I don't want to cross it off I feel weird about crossing it off well I'll tell you uh, there's a pretty cool technique that came from something else that was similar but yellow highlighter if it's something good and important it gets done and you put a big yellow streak through the day What's kind of neat is that eventually... That means, I, that means I need a second pen. This thing only holds one pen. Girl. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. Well, I mean, theoretic- Double-sided. theoretically, okay. you could go back through your whole thing and just highlight all those right now. Oh, yeah, I could. Right? And you could do a whole month's worth at once. But what's really neat about that is then going back and realizing, like, there's a lot of yellow. It's just one more way to appreciate mm. what you have in life. The, the way I heard that, there was a guy who kept like a prayer journal. He would write down the things he prayed. And then if, you, if any of those prayers got answered, he'd go back and highlight them. And then he'd go back later and be encouraged because he's like, look at all these things that I was worried about before that are taken care of. And so whatever it is that I'm dealing with today, this too shall pass. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing, so... The, the highlighter thing, cause the, what it is, it's, it's because it's colorful and it's vibrant and you see it and it catches your attention. You could just flip through and say, there's a lot. And you don't even necessarily need to see all of those things. You just see how much is in your life. I'm literally actively doing what you're talking about right now. I don't have the highlighter yet, but I had the list. Uh, Call Mom was on my list. And I um, 
some reason it was part of the actually numbered list and I just crossed it off. I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> That's the <laughs> highlight one. I called I call my mom. Um, and then I film, film the Cusco and cut, get Dez on searchable. Uh, even though Steven really took the ball, uh, <laughs> triple B with MJ didn't happen, but at least MJ still alive. So we can Not, do tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Oh, okay. Push ups yeah. happened. It wasn't the triple B, but you did a uh I mean, are we allowed to talk about it? You did a Cusco and Cut with that. Yeah, I just said It'll that. I just crossed it. it off the list. Yeah. Yeah. Just now. As I'm going through the day. I had Jeff Lem on Triple B TV. And that was just there just in case he happened to, I don't know, pop up. Searchable's reptiles. It's happening right now. Now you know the funny thing? I now I don't I don't want to cross that one off. That's the one I'm gonna highlight. <laughs> we turned it around. It was boring in the beginning. <laughs> was it? No, I don't know. I don't know either, but I definitely, like, the, the second we sat down, um, like, I was giving you crap about wanting to lay down, but, like, literally, like, two minutes in, I was like, I really want to lay down. I want to lay down. <laughs> I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with the podcast with the mics hanging down to our mouths. It's not. No, it's not. I just, like, felt oh, it was so nice. good to talk to you from, which, actually, you know, we let's, should do that. Let's do that one intentionally once where we just, like, fall asleep and people can follow along. <laughs> Fall asleep as we podcast. You yeah, know what I mean? It'd be like, like how we, because we do that a lot. And then when we're like, huh? Okay, it's over. <laughs> it's over. I wonder how long the audio recorder will keep recording, but I wonder how long people stay. I'm not going to upload. If we fall asleep, I'm not going to upload. Bro, I can fall sleeping. asleep a whole lot faster than we just did this podcast. I'll just tell you. Yeah, I know. But my point, or what I was thinking of right there, is a lot of the conversations we have like when we're on these trips and we're just like laying in the bed and the lights are out and it's like you know you're you're over there i'm over here and we're just talking until the person stops responding basically and you're like oh i used to do that all the time with my rejection cousin. i used to do time to go to sleep right dude i used to do that all the time with my cousin growing up man like it was just like that was the thing we just lay there in bed and like keep going back and forth until was it back and forth or was it always you talking and him falling asleep no you remember? I, um I can, it, it was kind of even keel. Like, well, that's good yeah, for me. Well, I was always the one talking. <laughs> the, the guys would fall asleep. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, they're asleep. There was five of us, and I'm the last one here still talking. Yeah, that's, that's my fun. life. Uh, yeah, so I think the next one. Well, unless we're location sponsored at uh, the what would? Oh no, Daytona is. Daytona might be the next yeah, one. Yeah, Daytona might be the next one, huh? I mean, I don't know. It can be dictated too. So, yeah. Anybody listening? I mean, like my favorite uh, offer for a location sponsor so far was a group of like five buddies that were like, "Hey, let's make Brian and Garrett come over to our house and podcast." And they were all just gonna chip in because I mean, I don't know. Can we talk money? I don't care. Everything else is right out I don't front. Give a shit, dude. So right now, the location sponsors cost, sponsorship costs twenty five hundred bucks. So like let's all throw in five hundred bucks and we'll just have Brian and Garrett come over for the weekend, we'll hang out and podcast. And it was great. It was yeah, like well we didn't do it, but I loved the idea of it. You know, I thought yeah, why is it always gonna be some big reptile company doing it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, we we talked about I mean, if you're Cafe pessimist, bringing us out, and that yeah, was great. Sure. But it was a lot more fun just to hang with those sure, guys. Sure, sure. Check it out if you're a pessimist. Though, like, like the, here's how you can go negative on that real quick. What kind of asshole makes his friends pay for him to come and hang out? <laughs> Fucking this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Unapologetic. Well, you know, there is ex- there's exposure too, and there's like, you know, <sighs> I'm not gonna say, you know, what we bring is worth something. That's true. I'll go ahead and say that too. It's well, you were just saying one of the guys at the party was someone that you met because they paid. He was like, the, as a kid, was like a fan of yours from Triple B TV, and they paid to, for one of your educational parties so that you would surprise him and show up at his house with your reptiles from your channel, and it's you. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Did he get any exposure? Did he make any money out of that? Maybe it's not about that for some people. I would exposure. I would wager right now that the people listening to this podcast is not about how do I better myself and my business and make more money and improve. There's other podcasts for that. That's not this one. You know what I mean? This one is like, it's almost more like the experience of it. So if you want to experience it, like, how, how much fun did we have when we went down to CMB Reptiles? They paid us to come and promote the opening of their show, which went great, and that was awesome. Not their show, their, their new reptile Grand store. Opening, right. That went great, and it was all 
cool. And I'm glad that we were able to deliver that value to them. But I'm sure that Caleb and Bill still text you from time to time. I know they do with me. Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, it, it has been a little bit. That's because I, I dropped a lot of it. But Caleb is always like, Caleb, they're yeah. always super awesome. Every time for I go sure. Back, I'm just like, thank, like, just thank you so much for and everything you And the best like, part of that trip was just hanging out with them in the backyard, even after the podcast, but during the podcast too. Yeah. But just... Hanging out with them. And oh, like, yeah. This yeah. is so great. Remember, they were like, oh, yeah. They pulled dude. up like chairs. I don't remember. Were they popping popcorn or eating chips or something? Like, look at them podcasting our yard. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was some kind of show. You it know? is a show. It was great. Well, sometimes it's really a show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I, with all those um, Timor pythons I was holding tonight, boy, they really hate the arm hair. Maybe it's time for me to make a show and shave again. I was just like, look at what a bad animal handler. I well, have. yeah, that stuff just grew back at like nobody's business. And I oh, just came back. Man. Wait, which arm was it? Well, was I shaved it, them what, both. I didn't did you shave, shave them both? One arm. Oh, I thought you did a one arm thing. No, I'd no. be too heavy on one side because of how shaggy my arms are. I was going to say that. You know, it's funny. It's like I'm relatively hairless on my whole body, but my arms are like. When I lived in Indonesia, everyone was like, yeah, you should really show this. You look like an orangutan. <laughs> A big red. Hair. I can't imagine having I'm, that much I'm hair. I'm super on my fried butt. today too. Look at that, yeah, just from that sun, little bit. Some sun, dude. After I was making fun of Dave. Wow, I feel like I would get caught on all kinds of stuff. Look at that stuff. Yeah, those snakes, man. They get caught on there all the time. That's insane. I can't imagine that kind of life. Yep. No, nope. it's just from there. Like if I pull the sleeve up to here, look, this looks like you. Oh, so you can imagine that kind of life. You're yep. like, well, up here it's just like you. It's right here. Hey. It's like from here down. It's like boom. This is the way I grow facial hair too. No beard, just a mustache. One place, boom. <laughs> I could grow a mustache in like 10th grade like it was nobody's business. It looked like the Marlboro Man. Dude, but that was where it peaked. <sighs> yeah, if we're going to uh, herp with Jeff Lem tomorrow, I think we need to like get some sleep. That's right. where I'm at. Where are you Sounds at? Sounds good. All right. Peace. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Good night. Searchable is ripped.